Hi, uh, I was asked to do this video with specific attention to a document that I'm going to go over. Uh, this friend of mine said this is of utmost critical importance to highlight the issue regarding nanotechnology in our foods and water and products that we use, pet supplies and so forth. So what I want to do first though is to recap a little bit to give a nugget of you know, synopsis of my story. My story can be found at www.clergyvictim.com, transforming victims into victors, wherein basically I was assaulted by a priest. I was a nun in the Roman Catholic Church for 14 years. Uh, about five of those years were spent in the convent, and after that I was pursuing a hermit lifestyle under the blessing of the Bishop of Worcester, Massachusetts. To come to find out later in this process, I was attending a monastery that was St. Joseph's Abbey in Spencer, Massachusetts, and I'm going to leave a link for you. There's, a vi there's an, art, um, an article that was written, let's see, May 19, 2016, and so I'm going to leave that link for you. It's called CIA Run Monastery, Relentless in Efforts to Silence Whistleblower None, and it's about three pages long, and I'll make sure you have the links to that. But basically what happened was I attended this monastery for, for services and so forth and came to find out that basically the founder of it was the head of MK Ultra, Mind Control Ultra. His name is J. Peter Grace. And why is this important? Because for believers in Christ, we cannot tolerate things like this. We are, we cannot, we cannot tolerate people using Christ as a cover for their, for, for diabolical uh, deeds. So I'm coming out and I'm saying, you know, I have prayed for these individuals for many years. I've suffered at the hands of their handlers, who are the Jesuits specifically, and several attempts were, were uh, taken on my life by these people. So you, you're welcome to go to the website to get my story. You can also see the video where I've triumphed over the technologies that were used against me and specifically the technologies used in my case were nano bio weapons, uh, biotech weapons. So praise God I'm healed of that. Um, so now what we have is we have an agenda that's a carryover from you know the the Nazi agenda and that's happening here in the United States. So we might ask the question, well, why, what, what's happening? What's the most important thing we need to focus on? First of all, if we don't understand history, we're going to fall back into the trap. So basically, this is a really cool book written by a friend of mine. He's put in decades of work. This is called Vatican Assassins, Wounded in the House of My Friends by Eric John Phelps. This is voluminous. I've, I've read most of it. It took me a very long time to read it. But basically what's happening in here is this book points to the fact that the Jesuits were in control of the outcome of and the planning of the, the murder of JFK. And going back even further into history, we have the story also outlined in this book, I think this is the upgraded edition, uh, where Abraham Lincoln and his story is also uncovered that the Jesuits also uh, uh, killed him, that they were involved. And what was the reason for that? Because there is a goal to subjugate all free peoples. And this is by the Vatican. And I'm saying this as an ex-nun. People have tried, or people in the intelligence community and the deep state have tried to erase my history, but I have all that evidence and it was supplied to certain locations where it needs to stay. But basically, the Jesuits have they have a pattern and this pattern has been going on throughout history since our country was free you know since the revolutionary war the the vatican sought to to cast a net over us in many many ways and now it's gotten to the degree where it's really serious in my opinion what i'm going to bring forward is a matter of national security and i did bring this attention to the attention of our president donald j trump who i believe is doing everything he can to, to mend these issues. So we're going to turn our attention to a document that is called Nano Domestic Quell. This was written, and of course I'm going to put this right into the, the, um, 
the display, but I'm going to just show you that I'm reading from real documents. These are open source. Okay, so I'm not going to, you know, get in trouble for reading them. But basically, uh, it says DTFN estimates for nano domestic quell phase four updated compliance. This is a DOD document with numbers and it, it was classified, uh, but released it at the time on the internet by an individual in June of 2013 or thereabouts. I think it was uh, somewhere about there anyways. Now, the issue of nano domestic quell is very important because there is an old World War statute on the books and World War One statute in 1917 there's this thing called the Trading with the Enemy Act and this act was secured at the time for enemies that were foreign against the United States and so this act was put into place to protect the United States and and so forth so now what we have is a problem we have someone who's invaded our country took over all of its systems. That would be judicial, that would be the armed forces, as Kay Griggs has very, very readily put together a tremendous case for that. Uh, and, and so all the systems of our government is evidence to be taken over by the Vatican through the Jesuits, who is their military arm for the Pope. And um, so basically, when I bring up nano domestic quell, what happened was this old world, world War I statute was turned against the American people because they cast a net over all peoples who have birth certificates by basically making us married or wedded to this all caps name that we were presented with at birth, or there, there pretty soon after our birth, on the birth certificate. I'm bringing this up because the FBI in the conversation had asked me, do you believe, this was an interview because they wanted to hire me, this was back in 2012, do you believe the Pope owns us all through the collateralization of our birth certificates? And of course I didn't answer the question, I kind of went on to another subject. So essentially what we have is in 1933 the amended version of the Trading with the Enemy Act, and this was done under Franklin Delano Roosevelt the Emergency Banking Relief Act. Now this was March, now Christopher Strunk and Eric John Phelps do an excellent job on outlining a lot of the details on the proclamations and so forth, but I'm gonna just stick to the big picture. Bottom line is in 1933, they made that World War statute, World War I statute, turned against us. So now we, as domestic, within the United States, if we are US citizens, we were all basically seized property, booty of war, and Franklin Delano Roosevelt was made the emperor of an empire now. We lost all common law rights at this point in time. And later it was solidified through two you know, uh, cases that happened in 1938. But again, I don't want to get into too much detail. So 1933 is a big, big thing to remember here. So now what we have is nano domestic quell, not nano foreign quell. Why? Because enemies within the United States are all U.S. citizens because somebody took over the United States. Okay. And again, uh, I'm going to go into the content here is revised nano domestic quell with the Department of Defense logo on there revised estimates for nano domestic quell protocols and again I'm not reading this to make people afraid because there's still remedies we're going to get into the remedies but this is good to know national nano domestic quell NDQ protocols for phase four DTFN estimated rates in phase four updated compliance for NDQ current total infection rates for United States general population is 87.2 percent Projected infection for general U.S. populace by January 2014 is estimated to reach 98%. Total infection for ages 18 and above may reach 99%. DTFN projects dispersal mediums will require additional resources for Phase 4 of NDQ. DTFN recommends an increase in the following medium inflows and outflows specific to liquid dispersal. Pepsi-Cola, 9.9%. Nestle, ADR. 8.5%, it goes on and on. Chicago Municipal, Atlanta Municipal, Danone, the yogurt. Coca-Cola, Los Angeles Municipal, Seattle Municipal, says dispersal outflows have shown significant improvement in population infection rates. Improvement in population infection rates. 
Recommended inflow increases deployed in October 2012 resulted in a net increase of infection rates by 0.82% slightly exceeding projections. Again, the reminder, this was under the administration of Obama. DTFN assures DOD compliance for Phase 4 will be completed one week ahead of schedule. No further recommendations have been submitted by DTFN for Phase 5. An expected update to outflow estimate rates will be forthcoming before Phase 5 initialization. Particularly, what happens is people are ingesting or taking these products and they're being infected with nanotechnology, which is basically has a viral envelope. It goes in and it wreaks havoc. It's very, very toxic to the human biological systems. And the good news is, see, when they talk about phase five, that is the initialization of, this is what I believe and understand, of, of the towers and so forth, and you know, 5G, and now we've got terahertz, which is even worse than that. Um, and what they're gonna do is with, the, with this, this, these activation systems, uh, that's gonna cause these food grade nanotechnologies basically to assemble and cause the breakdown of the human b mind and body. Because this stuff is de definitely the uh, precursor and an instrument used for mind control. So I say this, now for some people who don't, they eat the foods and they don't notice anything, you can still clean it out if it, ha you know, even if it's been activated, there's still ways to get around this and just, you know, do things to help your body. And you'd go to a toxicologist or something like that and just get yourself tested. Take a look, do a urine analysis, do some hair analysis, and take a look at what kind of metals in your body and do some, you know, cleanses. Now, what I want to do is talk about the remedy. Now, before we get into the remedy again, this, the big picture here is this is evidence to me. This document here is evidence that the Jesuits have taken over and that right now, I believe under Trump's administration, Trump's people know what's going on and they're doing what they can to stop this, but we all have to do our part. And this is a deep concern. This is a concern of mine for America. Um, especially after being recently stifled, my communications were messed up. And so therefore you'll see another video on YouTube about that in real, real video. But what we have here is the mark, the certification mark. It's a service mark that's certified no nano. And basically what we want to do is put this on products that are tested. See, when you go in and you expect that you're going to be eating organic food, Everything you pick that's in the store that's organic doesn't measure at the nano scale what's taking place. So I think I have, I think I have a, a real live sample of what we might try to do to get it on products. Uh, yeah, this is, it's gonna be like this, you know, certified no nano. And so the company, what we're, I'm gonna do what I can to also get better pictures into the video too. This mark is going to be on the products to show the differentiation that at the nano scale, this stuff is could be you know is is clean. Okay, we have. I could go through this booklet. I'm going to try to just give you the highlights. But our vi our vision statement, the company is No Nano Certifications Incorporated. And yes, while I was on the run, I was trying to do this to be able to maintain this mark and get it to happen through attorneys, and it did happen. Uh, no nano certifications vision statement the purpose is to give consumers confidence they are buying clean and healthy products foods and beverages free of contamination by harmful nanotechnology which have passed our certification tests so yes we would have everything sent through to the labs and so forth and uh, the goal and objective is the certification mark is to be used by persons or businesses authorized by the certifier is intended to certify that the goods provided do not contain any engineered biomolecules, non-organic or toxic ingredient for food, beverages, vitamins, nutritional supplements, clothing, textiles, soaps, shampoos, sunscreens, fragrances, moisturizers, and pet products. So yes, we got to save our pets from this stuff too. And so what, what's the problem? You know, basically I, nanotechnology is the new asbestos and I'm going to provide links to that uh, on, underneath this video so you can have a clear understanding of that. And um, they're, they're trying to use it for good purposes, but there's always something to that. 
I'm going to see. Yeah, this is worse than GMO, absolutely worse. And I wanted to see if I could find the quote from the doctor. There's a doctor in, in a study regarding this. And uh, he basically is, he's very, very concerned that, that this causes nanotech. There have been some investigation into whether or not nanoparticles in food poses any health risks. National Academics Press has published an article where nanoparticles are discovered to cause serious health risks, for example, inflammatory diseases to the lungs, liver, and spleen, and gran granulomas and mesothelioma in mice, ultimately potentially causing cancer and organ damage. See New Scientist article on nanotubes found in children's lungs, and of course we're going to provide that. And so it says also, there's another article that's really good. It's called Nanotechnology Offers Disturbing Parallels to GMOs. So if you thought GMOs were bad, this is even worse. But again, there's always a remedy. Um, let's see here. Of course, the budget that was at the time, let's see. According to Corral, nanotechnology was incorporated in an estimated U.S. $82 billion worth of manufactured goods in 2008 and appeared in over 800 consumer products on the market. So bottom line is, in America, no one's reporting this on the packaging. We, we, we don't have to do that. In, the, in uh, the European countries, they do do that. Um, let's see. Let's see here. So basically, this, these are the, the, we, we solved this problem. And, and essentially, we're going we're gonna to need help. So if any of you want to invest in something like this, we need help because I've basically spent probably 30 or 35,000 of my own funds into building this thing. And so obviously I'm at the stage where I need help to push this thing forward. So no nano certifications in the mark certified no nano on all these products. Now for those who are concerned because they've taken in these products, you can start cleaning yourself out. Go to um, a, a good guy, his name is Tony Pantoloresco, has a website called www.augmentinforce.com. Of course, we'll put those links underneath too. Basically, if you go to him, you'll be able to learn how to take you know, measures to get this stuff out of your body. Now, if you're dealing with weaponized version of this, like clearly military grade, or you feel you've been targeted in that kind of, of, of a manner, you can reach out to us and we'll provide that ctwh at protonmail.ch if you have any trouble with that which people have been lately let's you know have you try uh you know targeted t-a-r-g-e-t-e-d two the number two free at protonmail.com now before you do that before you contact us you need to open your own proton mail account and then contact us with your new email so the bottom line um there's remedies for all these things, and if we can stick together and, and just, you know, just brainstorm a little bit, we can come against all these technologies. Because the ultimate end and goal to this, this is a really cool synopsis I wrote about how this ties into their ultimate objective. My story reflects the intention of human trafficking and genocide for all mankind by the dark side, specifically in my belief by the Jesuits, for being tethered to AI systems, experiments, torture, etc., wherein the ultimate objective is to network the biological systems of man with a system of artificial intelligence reducing humanity to a totally controllable status. Yes, World War Z is a very good movie if you want to see the effects of, of what nanotech could do to the body. That would be a great illustration of it. This is being accomplished through many different programs, operations, and applications that attack mankind's environment, the air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, the products we use, and the information systems we're exposed to. And it just goes on, in my case, the use of military-grade nanotech as a chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear weapon was used with efforts to kill me several times. I've survived these attacks by the grace of God through living in hiding since 2013 under different aliases prior to that until Donald Trump took office in late 2016. So all of this to say is we do have a remedy, and I'm gonna show you a picture that basically um, the Jesuit model for uh, assassination was pretty simple back then, and I'm gonna have to probably put this also on top of the, um, the video once I edit it, but basically what you have here is the Jesuits' uh, crucifixes and their prayer book, and then they have vials of poison and loaded guns, 
And it says here, Jesuit Knights of Malta Assassin's Kit around mid to late 19th century. Just imagine how evolved this process is now in modern times. And another thing, you know, go to, to Chris Strong's website, Surety No More. Uh, very, very, very uh, powerful information there. It talks about how in 1933 we're all brought hybridized uh, to a status of, uh, of basically being controlled through the instruments of paper and so forth. So go to Chris Strunk's website and go to vaticanassassins.org. That's a very powerful website if you want to learn more about the history of the Jesuits. But if this is what they've done in the past, uh, in my personal experience, I'm going to close with this, this uh, writing from an affidavit from a toxicologist. Her name is Dr. Hildegard Staniger. I'm closing with this to let you know that this is really this is this is real. And we, as a country, again, I, I have to stress this: we cannot prejudice. We I do not prejudice Catholics. They're very good people. A lot of them are fed up with this stuff. So. Uh, this is from Exhibit JJ uh, to Bernor's Legal Notice to the World, which is my document. You can find that at clergyvictim.com. And it says in, in the tab, I think it's the third one down, nanotechnology used in efforts to silence informant. Um, it says here in Dr. Hildegard Staniger's report, Carrie Burner was perfectly clear of this technology and since recent tests pending as of date of affidavit, has returned to show a presence of specific nanotechnology composed of hexocarboxyls that are specifically used to make porphyrin nanotubes used in hexagonal waveguides as reported in phase one, etc. Now she goes on and says, this is important. Special request analysis dated June 6, 2015, were reintroduced back into her system that she never gave permission for this, that the use of it was for torture, terrorism, and hate crimes reasons against her due to Kiri Berners' unswerving faith in Christ without adherence to the Catholic faith tenets, recent conversion to 2008 to, to orthodoxy, a heretical act as defined by the Roman Catholic dogmas, as a means of retaliation by those she witnessed against in a criminal trial in 2003 against a priest of the Cistercian Order and the Catholic Church. Yes, I did forgive all these people, okay? But now I'm talking on a whole other level. Uh, I've forgiven the people that have tried to kill me. But now it's coming to the degree where there's more, there's more than just me at stake here. Um, the earmarks, this is continuing. This is Dr. Hildegard's report um, of July 3rd, 2015. The earmarks of Jesuit attacks are also seen in that Fordham University pioneered the use of nanotechnology and is one of the leading authorities on the subject. According to Kiri Berner's testimony, transcript of the trial case number, etc., Commonwealth versus Joseph Trucon, March 13, 2003, both priests who testified against her were graduates, affiliates, or professors at Fordham University. Now to recap, I was involved in a case where a priest uh, sexually assaulted me. Uh, I went I was the re uh, to, to speak for the Commonwealth as a witness, and I lost the case, okay? And that opened up a whole other can of worms that helped me understand how the judicial systems were completely taken over. And of course, that information taken over by the Jesuits came to me through Leo Lyon Zagami, who's a former Illuminati defector. He's a defector from the Illuminati P2 Lodge. Going on, just to give you background into what this is about. Affiant, meaning Dr. Hildy, heard Kiri Berner mentioning her concern that this St. Joseph's Abbey in Spencer, Massachusetts was involved and at the same time, the same, the same abbey had a founder by the name of J. Peter Grace who is also known as one of the leaders involved in Project Paperclip, an operation that has furnished a way to assist German doctors of the Third Reich to evade the Nuremberg trials while also assisting with protecting those involved in mind control experiments. German scientists in 1934 developed nanotechnology as microbeads and other related technologies as stated in Nanotechnology, this is a book she's citing, a gentle introduction to the next big idea by Mark, Mark Ratner and Daniel Ratner, uh, Prentice Hall, Upper Saddle River, New Jersey, uh, copyrighted 2003, hope you get that, so if you want to find it, you can read it. Affin believes Kira Berner to be of sound mind and that her concerns are legitimate. 
Appian has personally seen the Department of Homeland Security, we call it the Department of Homeland Security, monitor meetings outside the building when Kira Brenner was present with Appian on Saturday, December 7, 2013, etc. So I'm saying this, again, I've forgiven the Abbey, I've forgiven those who, who run the Abbey, meaning the, the CIA or meaning the, the Jesuits, okay, I've forgiven them. The issue we're dealing with is there needs to be a change. There needs to be Jesuits to come out and say, listen, enough is enough. We're not going to be a part of this. We don't want to be a part of this. And, uh, you know, there, there has to be a remedy to these issues. So I'm just sharing my story. I haven't gone through, I have not done legal suits against any of these people. I've tried, but there were several attempts against the attorney's lives that were involved. And that's all been documented. But I share this because you know, we need to get remedies. And one of the remedies I think we have at our disposal that we should turn, you know, turn to is the Logan Act. And, oh, another really good one, too, is Catholics out there, this is a call to you. Because I, 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 I know many of you are in love with Jesus and you just want to do the right thing, but you're, the systems of the Catholic Church hierarchy is just absolutely... You know, it's, it's appalling, frankly. So, in the spirit of Pope Clement XIV, who expelled the Jesuits and permanently suppressed the Jesuit order July 21st, 1773, the bottom line is Catholics need to stand up and say, we don't want this in our church. We don't, we don't want any of it. Um, another thing is this Logan Act. I'm just going to read you what this Logan Act is and you and I'll provide this link also in the video because I've written a, an article with um, it's called Burn or Counterpoint to the Catholic Church and it was published in the Federal Observer and also on Bishop Accountability they also picked up this this um, back in 2004 but here is the Logan Act here are the federal law states US Code Title 18 Part 1 Chapter 45 Subsection 953 private correspondence with foreign governments any citizen of the United States, wherever he may be, who without authority of the United States directly or indirectly commences or carries on any correspondence or intercourse with any foreign government or any officer or agent thereof with intent to influence the measures or conduct of any foreign government or of any officer or agent thereof in retaliation to any disputes or controversies with the United States or to defeat the measures of the United States shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than three years or both. This section shall not abridge the right and it goes on for other remedies and so forth. So there are things that we can do and I would highly also recommend regarding this nano domestic quell issue, write your congressman, it just even if you don't believe they'll do something, it's very important to give notice. We have to do our part. If, and you know, you never know who actually really might want to help you in Congress. You don't know that. So you, it's very important to get it on the record, reach out to them and say, this kind of thing needs to come to a, a close. This, th this stuff needs to stop. So I hope this was helpful to you. And again, I pray, you know, for the Jesuits. I pray for the Abbey. I pray for the CIA. I pray for all these situations. And I'm still here breathing for a reason. And I believe part of the reason is to bring healing to the situation. So I want to stay focused on the remedy. That's where I get my, my joy, is, is looking into remedies and helping people. And um, so if you, need, if you want you know, to explore anything further on this subject matter, you're welcome to go to clergyvictim.com. And uh, you can find me on reel.video. And we're also being careful to expand our platforms because of the recent things that have been happening uh, you know, with Alex Jones and you know, people being taken off of YouTube and so forth and Facebook. Um, so it's important. We have to fight for our First am Amendment rights or else we won't have any other rights. So God bless you, and I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you.